Legendary investor Charlie Munger, who died with a net worth of $2.6 billion, famously said, The first $100,000 is a bitch, but you gotta do it. I don't care what you have to do. Find a way to get your hands on $100,000. After that, you can ease off the gas a little bit. Earning your first $100,000 can feel impossible, but today, I'll share how it gets a lot easier after you reach that milestone, and at the end, I'll reveal unique strategies that you can incorporate into your daily life to fast-track your journey. The first golden rule on our journey is capital scales well. What does this mean? In simple terms, the returns and advantages of having capital increase proportionally as the amount of capital grows. Consider this. Investing $100 in the stock market with an average return of 10% would yield just $10 after one year. For most people, this isn't enough money to get excited about. But if you had $100,000 invested with the same 10% return, that's a significant $10,000 after a year. What's fascinating is that in both scenarios, you face the exact same risk, but the return in terms of dollars becomes considerably more powerful. The next rule, complementing capital scales well, is money rides momentum, akin to the snowball effect. Picture a small snowball rolling down a hill, growing larger as it accumulates more snow, propelled by its own momentum. Saving money can be viewed in the same way. Consider this example. If you invest $10,000 annually in the stock market with a 7% return accounting for inflation, it takes approximately 7.8 years to reach $100,000. Now, a common misconception is that reaching $1 million would take 10 times 7.8 years. However, thanks to the magic of compounding, it's not the case. Continuing to invest the same $10,000 per year, you'd reach $200,000 in just 5.1 more years. This is because, as you invest annually, your initial $100,000 starts generating returns each year, contributing to the overall account. Take a look at the timeline for saving each $100,000 up to $1 million, and notice how it takes only 1.3 years to save the final $100,000 compared to the 7.8 years for the initial $100,000. Isn't this amazing? The key takeaway from this rule is, yes, it gets easier to save after you hit $100,000. Now that we've understand the two fundamental rules of wealth accumulation, let's see how we can minimize the 7.8 years it takes to save that initial 100K. By doing so, we can truly amplify the impact of capital scaling and money momentum. Every single dollar is so important, especially at the beginning when you're trying to save your first 100K. It's crucial to cut back on expenses across the board, whether it's on branded clothes, dining out, daily Starbucks coffee, or partying. I challenge you all after this video to review your bank statement from last month and see where you can reduce spending. You'll be amazed at how many unnecessary impulse purchases you made. Let me know in the comments what your worst impulse purchase has been. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, the initial 100K is seldom solely generated from investment returns. Utilizing this online calculator, let's examine the scenario. If you save $10,000 annually for seven years with a consistent 10% return, you'll reach $100,000, but 70% of this originates from savings, while only 30% results from interest on the investment. The key takeaway is that achieving your first 100K is rarely achieved from investment returns alone. It comes from being smart with your money, trying to earn more money, and of course spending less money. So if your goal is to save $100,000 quickly, you're in luck. I have three unique strategies to help you get there, and I'm sure most of you haven't heard of all three. Strategy one, increase your offense. It's all about amplifying your monthly income. There are many ways to achieve this, including doing online classes in the evenings for certifications related to your profession, explore side hustles or freelance work, switching jobs to better paying roles, invest in stocks, invest in real estate and businesses. In this strategy, your time should be spent figuring out how to earn more money rather than saving more money. This brings us nicely onto the second strategy, playing good defense. Author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki famously said, it's not how much money you make, but how much you keep, how hard it works for you, and how many generations you keep it for. This strategy is about reducing every excess cost possible so that you can maximize your savings rate. Some actionable steps here include planning the year ahead, budgeting, and cutting back on discretionary spending. Do you know how much you spend on average each month eating out or on streaming subscriptions? Strategy three is maximizing the efficiency of your earnings. It's no surprise to any of you that the government love taking a portion of your earnings each month in the form of tax. Now, this can vary depending on where you live, but goes from 0% up to almost 50%. One of the best ways to avoid this tax is to save money in sheltered accounts like the Roth IRA, where earnings grow tax-free, traditional IRA, where contributions have tax deductions, 
and 401k plans, where employers match your contributions. These three accounts help significantly reduce the time it takes you to get to 100k in savings. Another method of increasing efficiency of earnings is to save your money in a high-yield savings account. Many institutions offer savings rates up to 5%, and they can be a great way to earn an extra few percent each year at no extra effort. If you want to know how much money you need to retire, check out this video next.